starting to the bottom left. The former TSL Zerg, one of many, joined MVP. He is... MVP Shine. Shine up against a strong Protoss opponent, one of the best Casper players that we have. The first one uh, to uh, cause an uproar in the GSL as he was so strong in this first season that he played. To the top right in blue, let's introduce our player in the lead with the 1-0. He is... SK Telecom T1, great! Really strong player and not messing around in game number one. You know, I feel like Shine looked a little bit nervous in the booth. At the very least, he was bouncing around a little bit. His adrenaline is pumping right now. Very fast pylon scout comes out here for rain. This will, of course, force the pool first. And as we did in the game before, let's give those two guys an opportunity. Let's let's plug that with us here yes. as well. We have currently Shine up against Rain and the Zerg player to the bottom left. His Twitter account is uh, was changed, of course. Now it is MVP underscore Shine. And it's a little bit embarrassing that he only has 640 uh, followers on Twitter because Zerg players apparently are sleeping these days. Yeah. Um, I am not quite sure Wake up, guys. if you are trying to get through the winter. Yeah, I was going to make the same joke, man. Yeah, that is actually... This guy has been in Code A for a while, always so close to getting into Code S. So what is this, love. Twitter hibernation? Yeah, true. <laughs> exactly. Twitter hibernation coming in. At MVP underscore shine for a Zerg player. But the Protoss to the top right, he actually created his Twitter at WCS uh, Grand Finals when I told him that you should use Twitter instead of Facebook. He's like, oh really? And I'm like, yeah, you should probably create one. And then Team Liquid added him. Now he has a few followers, but still way too less. He has 2,450. That has to be changed. Protoss players out there, give him some love. His account is SKT1Rain. Pretty easy to find on Twitter. And while you're at it, at the two of us, once again, as well, at Caldo and at ProxyWolf, yeah. make sure to check all those four Twitters out while exactly. we have the openings unfold between the two of them. And so far, very normal openings indeed. He even checks here to make sure he's not being cannoned. Goes pool first, sends the drone to the third base, with a Zergling, so if there's a probe to be annoying, he'll be able to make sure that drone goes down. This is a really aggressive third base for this map. So many Zerg players out there right now are taking gas and teching on two base as they take their thirds. They can take it with investors or going mutas to put the pressure on the Protoss while they take their third. But Shine is saying, no, I'm, I'm actually just going to do this like we would do it on Antigua or like we would do it on Entombed or even uh, a map like Daybreak. He's just going to go ahead and take that very early. People didn't get my, the brilliance of my pun earlier, Wolf. They didn't understand. Well, that. that's. I'm sad. There are always people out there that will never understand your brilliance. It'll be okay. I promise. There will be many other odd usernames. Listen, this is the only. This is StarCraft 2 in its infancy. I'm, I'm a sad pan, I know. Well, it was not when it rained in pours. It actually went for a little bit longer than that. Anyways, important part here is that we have. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have to mention All right, don't, time don't, time. stop pouring out those tears. Let's just get on with this. <laughs> I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to brace myself. Third base coming up now for Shine. Currently uh, building it at the bottom right. And this is Neo Planet S. So right now, this is one of those maps where Wayne can, again, hit a timing. And this guy, he just knows exactly when to go. It's like he has a stopwatch in the booth, and every single time it, there's a timing, you know, it's like this, but nah, nah. Now he could move out yeah. with... Shine actually needs to replace his Broodlord clock with that watch so he knows when the push is coming. Yeah. There's the Robo going down. Robo before, before plus, plus one. one. Yeah, so this this lends itself usually to the attack, but we have seen some variations recently. The Robo is scary. If you see it and it's this fast, it can make a Zerg player think a lot of different things. There go the gases. Shine just playing very straight up right now, not taking any chances, and just playing this like you would expect to see on a regular map. The Overlord here is not going to be too lucky. Ah, no, it's getting, just getting away. Yeah, maybe he thought that they extended a little uh, bit further out. Alright, so let's have a look at this. The robotics is about to be finished. We don't have a plus one attack upgrade just yet. There it is. And now do we see the first Immortal right away? He has the resources. He certainly does. He's supply blocked with the pylon finishes. But the Immortal has been started. There it is. Yeah. Uh, I love this one quote that Kalaris actually dropped at IAM. Uh, knock knock, choo choo, GG. That's exactly what we could see here. Parting style. We could certainly see that. We have the Lair Tech coming up here for Shine. 
The thing is, it's really so difficult if you have like a perfectly executed Soul Train uh, Immortal push coming up to counter it. Life has done so in uh, the Blizzard Cup Finals. It was a great series. If you haven't watched it yet, make sure to check it out at GOMTV.net. I think the VODs are actually... I don't even know if they're free by now, but... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't want to... If man, it's worth the money, yeah. so... If they're not... I think it's it was a pretty uh, cheap tournament in Speaking terms of... Speaking of free, by the way, EHQ and everything will be free for the GSTL tournament we have coming up on Harvest War. Everyone will yeah. be able to watch that for free, so that's something I forgot to mention, but that's going to be awesome. Yeah. Five additional gates are now being placed down, and Shine, I don't think he has any clue what's yeah, going on here. Yeah, he even built Spore yeah. Crawlers because he expects another opening with Stargate. He's not made too many drones, he's up to 59, but he's making Lings, and yeah, Lings can be good if you can catch reinforcements, if you can get a good surround on your opponent before you can get four seals off, but against somebody whose micro is as good as Reigns, when you fight Lings in the middle of the map, you're going to feel pretty comfortable yeah. with that. You know, this is really a parting now, just saying at the SKT1 house and, uh, you know, walking over to Rain and like, hey dude, I can teach you this awesome build that I have. He's like, what, really? Yeah, I'm sure, it was probably the opposite. I'm sure that Rain walked over and said, hey man, you got to teach me that trick you do. <laughs> that, that might also be the case. You so, see Harding is over there playing with some Brio train made out of Immortals. Harding's probably just watching this games and starts clapping as soon as Rain moves out. Which Rain certainly does currently not do. He starts, yeah, he plus, starts two. plus two in blink. Yeah, he obviously already built the uh, uh, Twilight Council a little bit earlier. So what we can see the third base now. What a sneaky move. Uh, you know, this is pretty this is pretty interesting that he does this like this. You know, it's a delayed third, but he's scared Shine enough that Shine has made spine crawlers to home. Tech is going to be the next step. He's going to need to add robotic support bay for his Colossi. And he has three Immortals. If he actually... No, okay, he goes into probes. You know, Hero plays a very similar style where he then starts his third base, but moves out with roughly five Immortals after. This is a little bit of a build that he played two months ago, uh, let's say one and a half months ago. Uh, he was really successful with this. He just goes for the third, but he doesn't really saturate completely, and then moves out. That was really scary, and a lot of Zerg players completely underestimated this push, and then it just died. But now we have Ray not only sticking with the blink upgrade, he's going straight into the robotics bay. I really like what Shine is doing right now, by the way. He's trying to he attacks that gateway deliberately, knowing he can't get in, but he's trying to draw those forces in so he can get into the third base, but unfortunately, Rain is not really taking the bait, and he's got that wall set up. I'm a little bit, I'm actually a little bit sad that we don't see the Immortal push. I would have loved to see one, it's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while, but he realizes, I feel, that on this map it's a better choice to take a third, given the circumstances. Spire goes up now. Ooh, uh, third base, fourth base coming up at the bottom right already. This is a good position for Shine. I don't think he's going to go Mutas, I think he's just going to start Corruptors, but if he has Corruptors out this early against the Colossi that are going to be started, he's going to feel pretty happy with it. With that. Infestors already being on the map, Mutalus would be a little bit It weird, would be a usually. crazy tech switch that could catch yeah. players off guard, but it just... In We've this case on this map, that it's not... Rarely. Effective. Sometimes you see it when a player has a huge bank, and from how the game goes, he realizes yeah. that the Mutalus transition would completely We've seen opponent. this on like the days of Shakur's Plateau and Valley, yeah, stuff, well. and in Tomb Valley. But it's not really the the tech. It's it's not like a standard strategy that you just go yeah. for. And now there's with the hive the, tech started, yeah. there's of course no question that we will see the Great Aspire. The base at the bottom right is pretty cool by Shine because now he could take the base to the top left as well. well. Not the top top left, but the one that's near his creep. So. He has two bases. If one is found, he just sends the drones over to the other one. I think we're probably going to see him take that base pretty soon. He's starting to spine up a little bit. He sees this push coming out, and this is a really scary push. With Colossi being added in the mix, he's got plus three on the way in range, but even these units alone without the Colossi to support them is really, really dangerous. Mm. I really like that... Well, he's setting out the spine crawlers. I, lo I love that Shine doesn't skip them or try to skip them. We've seen this a little bit in the past few games in the round of 48 here at the GSL Code, and it was most of the time not too successful. When you're up against Rain, you're expecting a pre boot low timing of your opponent. And with extended thermal lands now finishing up, plus three on the tap, that's something that we are going to see once again. So let's see if Shine can survive this time. Big counter attack here. There's a Zealot and a Colossus, though. Colossus is going to have to walk up onto the cliff, use that mechanic. Nicely done, good micro. A few things getting toasted there, but 
much more important than Shine keeps his Colossus alive. He's going to catch these links as well. Such map awareness with these Observer. He doesn't, this isn't a coincidence. He sees the links with his Observer he's got there. Now he can even pick off a Tumor and then back up. Again, the wall is ready. Uh-oh, but he's not on hold position. The Zealot gets pushed here a little bit. Yeah. But with the cannon and the warp and the Zealots, he's going to be fine, yeah. But still a well played here by Rain. And now suddenly those few stalkers, they need to blink, but they're already links in position and he runs in with the rest of them. A beautiful surround and he takes down another three, three stalkers. Yeah, and he does not want to actually commit to this game. He could fungal and run. He needs to fungal those stalkers and run. Turns around though, this is good for Rain. Rain could blink forward. There's not very many units here. He's trying to wait for those Broodlords. That's what he needs here. And plus three attack, finishing up here for Rain. He's got a great timing with these Colossi. He still has some Immortals in here, even though he lost that initial one. Time is of the essence. Here comes the Protoss player pushing in. The Great Aspire is not done just yet, but soon we will see the first Brute Lords being morphed. Yes, we will. There goes the Spine starting to fall here. He needs to react, he needs to re-engage, but he's trying to find the best angle. Good bungles so far, and the Corruptors come in, but excellent micro for Shiny. Blinks forward, the Colossi need to target those Investors, though. Rain with a blink forward, Shine moves back his Corruptors. Another funnel hits home, goes down on the sentries. Warp he's moving here. in, trying to chase down those few Colossi, but the Corruptors, they have to back away as another blink by Rain Stalkers. Rain is, crashes them. His control is out of this world, man. Those Corruptors on the other side were not used in the fight. Now he wishes they were. It's Brute Lord O'Clock, but he can't build any because yeah. he does not have the gas anymore. Exactly. Well, actually, the minerals. These guys have different times on their watches right go. now. And here we go. The Brute Lords come down, but he's got a great position with these Colossi. And there's too much damage output here. Nine initial stalkers. He can blink into the main. He does. Uh. And those Brute Lords cannot finish morphing. No chance. He's losing them one by one. 120 supply for Shine. Rain down to 160. And he goes for it again. The Protoss play is still with 1,100 minerals for the next round of Warpins, but he doesn't even need it anymore. This group of Stalkers is going to finish the hopes of Shine of advancing. Yep. This is too much. Nine more Stalkers come in, and this is way too much. He's got an 80 supply lead here. GG! And Reigns fans are screaming. He advances. Unfortunately for Shine, he will find himself yet again in Code B. Rain advances to the second round. Well played, sir. Congratulations. A sad, sad day for Shine. Shine didn't finish his play today, so Rain came and took over. Yep. You know, uh, there's a thing in science called the Rain Cycle. And this, I feel, is the part called precipitation. He was condensing, formed some clouds up there. Now he's raining down. I think it's going to be a long time before we have that evaporation. How long did you work on this one? No, actually, it just came to me suddenly. I don't know. <laughs> that, was, that was actually like a shot in the dark. I had two blindfolds on with that one. Okay. I had two blindfolds in, in the dark underground. I didn't know what time it was. My sleep schedule was messed up, and I was like... And I fired that shot. It hit the bullseye. No, you're overdoing it. Hit the bullseye. Okay, William Tell. <laughs> you know who that is, right? I'm like... <laughs> He didn't make the phone right. That was Alexander Bell, right? Right? Alexander Graham Bell made the telephone. Okay. Did you know that? Now you're trolling me, right? No, no. Alexander Graham Bell made the telephone. You don't telephone. know who William Tell is? I used to know. I don't remember. I'm like, I don't know, man. Okay. You looked it up in the break. Okay. We have a break, guys. I used to know. I swear. Like, yeah, that yeah, name is familiar. I know. I mean... Okay. We have a break now. Wolf is going to look up who William, uh, William Tell is. I forgot. This is and, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> And then we have Nesty fighting in the round first round of Code A. Rain made it into the second round in our last best of three. Shine is unfortunately down to Code B, but we have another best of three in a store for you, so see you in a few minutes.